Hmm, y'all are not ready for this video. I'll tell you that much because I'm not ready. Wow. Um, I just stumbled, excuse me, across Demi Lovato's YouTube series. Um, I watched a couple of the videos a few weeks ago, and then I re-stumbled onto it today, and I was just watching one of the episodes, and it was the one where she told her friend, you deserve the right to tell your story because if you want to, you can set the record straight. And I was, and she's like, you deserve that. You got um, things labeled on you and you had nothing to do with them. Or it was just, it's a really good episode. And I was thinking about that and you're gonna have to ignore my hair. I'm not taking a shower till later because I'm tired. So I was thinking about that. I've been honest in all my videos. There was a series I did a couple of years ago when I turned 40 uh, and it's called, what is it called? People that influenced me or something like that. When I hit 40, I wanted to look back at people that have, this is gonna be an emotional video, I just realized that. People that have influenced me throughout my life and things that I went through throughout my life that were highly impressionable upon me. Uh, things that really changed things in my life in either my personality or, or moments that were pretty life altering or situations that were life altering. So I think I have that series on my YouTube channel. I will go back and look. But what I wanted to share is that Demi Lovato and I don't connect on anything. I mean, her life is completely different from mine and that's fine. But I absolutely love the way that she is open and honest. And she's, I saw an interview with her when I first started, before I started watching it. This was the whole reason I started watching the video. She says, you know what? If I tell my truth, then no one else has a say. And she laid it all out there because she's like, What's anyone going to say now? This is the truth. And even though it changes the way that people look at her, I see a survivor. I see there's in this episode, this is what touched my heart. I hate tears. Um, her friend got on there when she relapsed after she almost died. Like the day she got out of this incredibly intense trauma, life-saving program to try to save her life. Hi, kitty. Um, the day she got out, she called her drug dealer and she told the reasons why and all of that stuff. So instead of the people she cared most about, who she turned to for help and them saying, why did you do this and all of those things which they did because it came from a place of love but then they stopped and they said oh my gosh you must be in so much pain you must be going through so much i think that's why i really really love dr Paranon, my surgeon because that's what she said she's like oh my gosh you've really been suffering haven't you and there's a way to talk to people I can't hold this phone steady. There is a way to talk to people that lets them know that you don't get it, but that you understand that they're suffering. Anyway, um, I'm going to share something right now that I might go into detail at another time. One of the reasons I get so fearful that I am back in a lupus relapse and that I'm going back through all of this pain again. My mama just tried to call me. I'll call you in a minute, mom. When I get in the car, um, on speaker, don't worry, it's hands-free. Um, I, I have pain every day. Every single day, something hurts so bad, so bad. <laughs> Today, it's almost embarrassing. There is a spot right here on my chest that I woke up that is hot to the touch and red and inflamed and um, for no reason. 
My body's just deciding to fight right there today. I'll call you in a minute, mom. Now she's texting me. <laughs> um, the reason I fear going through this lupus relapse again is because I'll tell you this much. I have been in pain my entire life. And there were times where people threw doctors, threw painkillers at me and uh, muscle relaxers and steroids. And I ended up with an addiction that... I am a highly controlled individual inside. Um, I don't know how to explain that. Like I, that's a dangerous personality to have. Knowing that you can push yourself to your absolute breaking point and still be in control. That is a bad thing to know about yourself. Because you can drive yourself into sickness like I have. Or you can drive yourself into addiction because you know you've got it. Um, you can drive yourself into depression in that addiction. When I say addiction, uh, my addiction was to muscle relaxers and painkillers. And um, maybe to sleeping pills at one point. But... Yes, there has been suicide attempts in my life or this close to suicide attempts. I've never actually done it. I've actually taken control of my addictions um, at many different times in my life. And I was in my EMT class last night and I said something out loud that scared me. <sighs> scared me. And everybody was like, what? Um, I asked the cop that comes to my class, who's a ex-army Iraq vet. He's really cool. Uh-oh. I'm waiting on furniture. Hold on. No, it's not furniture. Okay, so I asked him, I said, hey, is tramadol addictive? And he's like, oh yeah, absolutely. And then the flight nurse across the um, classroom that I know says, um, oh yeah, tramadol is a, a type something narcotic. And I can't remember what I said. And I said, uh. and I said, is that something that I need to... Um, like have locked up because I have teenage boys and, and not that I'm worried about them being addicts or anything like that, but I, I kind of don't like having it in my house. And the cop goes, well, why don't you like having it in the house? I goes, I don't know. It just makes me feel uncomfortable. And then he's like, well, just keep it on you. And I'm like, yeah, I don't know why, but that doesn't make me feel comfortable either. And so he goes, hmm, well, do what you want with it. And I, um, left and I was like why did I say that why did that statement catch me so off guard why did it even come out of my mouth and then I got home and I'm like oh my gosh um I've been struggling and carrying around this bottle of tramadol which isn't morphine but they gave me morphine in the hospital and I really didn't want it for painkiller addiction but um I don't keep that stuff in the house I flush it or I, I find that when I get down to like the last two or three pills that I kind of hoard them and carry them around with me and and it's almost like a safety mechanism for me but I'm trying to get control of those behaviors but see here's the deal I'm in this horrible lupus episode and yes my furniture just got here and I have to leave and I have to tell them I have to leave because I gotta go with my kids I'm in pain. They want to give me painkillers. They want to give me muscle relaxers. And I keep telling them, no, I've been carrying around this damn bottle of tramadol and I'm getting rid of it today because now I understand where these thoughts are coming from. I'm like, I can't have that. I can't have that in my possession or in my home. And I didn't realize, but I've been carrying it around. I've only taken one of them. And it was when I couldn't sleep one night because I was in so much freaking pain. So yeah. That's a lot. That's part of my life that you didn't know. In my 20s, I fell away. I didn't fall away from my religion. I stopped going to church. I was never into anything. I never hardly drank. I worked in restaurants. I drank only at times where I was so depressed I could stand it. And um, I was never addicted to alcohol or anything like that. I was a marijuana smoker because uh, it treated my pain and all of those things. But... Yeah, but that's part of my life you didn't know. And then I met my husband. 
He never knew about any of that part of my life until later. So yeah, I'm fearful of being in pain.